the veil is thinning, the other crowd and the ancestors are roaming free. The fairy hills have opened from the various caves and springs around the world. They've started to move through. Magic is in the air. The seasons are changing. The season of light has ended and the season of darkness is upon us. As we are preparing for these dark times, we get to celebrate the new year. Happy and blessed summer, everybody. We've talked about it a lot. Hopefully you've been doing your prep work. Today, we're just going to dive right in and just have a little celebration for the holiday that is. It's Samhain today as we walk together down Creation's Pass. Hello, everybody. My name is Charlie. I am a Christo Pagan Druid and Priest of Bridget. Hello, everyone. I'm Brian. Mischief managed. I'm a chef to the daggers. That was great. Hold on. It's a day today. So, Samhain is here. We've done a lot of prep work. There is a lot still to go on. I know you're probably thinking you've talked about this holiday a lot. And I just I have one thing to say to that. You cannot talk about this holiday enough. Because whether we're talking about the pagan religious festival of Samhain or the, I, I live in the United States, the American secular holiday of Halloween. This is my favorite time of year. And that's why we went all out for it this year. Just wait and see what we do next year because we're probably going to start planning next year's Samhain this year. Not to mention, this is a holiday time that in a lot of the different traditions, it's a three-day festival. Like it's three days. They, they it's just recognized. Catholics recognize as a three day thing, you know, because it's three days. It's all it's all souls. Like it's all of them. So yeah, it's definitely a big thing. It's a big thing. And we are going to be talking about what we're doing for Samhain this year. Some hopes and fears about Samhain, what we're bringing into the new year, and all of that. But before we get into it, if you haven't already, don't forget to like, subscribe, follow, whatever the terminology is on the app that you're listening to us on really does help us out and plus we do original episodes five days a week monday through friday talking about original christo pagan and druid topics and you don't want to miss anything because soon it's not going to be Samhain related we're going into november and we have even more stuff to talk about because yeah this is really an inexhaustible well i could talk about spiritual and craft related stuff forever Thank you to everybody who's already subscribed. Let's get on with the show. So, it's Samhain. What exactly is going on? Well, traditionally we would say this is the time when the Queen of the Greenwood and the Lord of the Wildwood retreat back to the other of world, and the Queen of the Wind and the Lord of the Hunt are coming into ours. They're trading places. It's not uncommon when people visit the other world to see that the seasons are reversed. And it's fine. I have a more updated view of this that what is happening right now is the Lord of the Wildwood and the Queen of the Greenwood are heading south down to our friends in the Southern Hemisphere who are starting to see spring and the Lord of the Hunt and the Queen of the Wind are coming north because we are going into winter and they're kind of moving back and forth in this great migration of spirits north to south that happens every year. And I think it's called both and that it's a north to south migration and then in out of the other world migration that happens every year. It's a time of great excitement because you can feel it in the air. This is the season that I relate to most. Now, if you're not familiar with the terms used in the fairy craft, yes, there are names that are associated with those people. I, like a lot of practitioners, like the uh, vagary of saying the hunter, the queen of the wind, and the lord of the wildwood. If you have names that you like to use, use them. Not my bad. But the queen of the wind, I wouldn't say she's like a patroness or anything, but we vibe. She was probably the first member of the other crowd that I have vivid and distinct memories of meeting and coming into relationship with. Back when I was in high school, this grand, beautiful, dark woman kind of dancing through the winds on a beautiful autumn day when I was out for a walk in Maryland. I just had a moment of, oh, okay, that's interesting. I had that experience many times and then, oh, oh, that's what that was. She is about the balance between life and death. She is about divination, renewal, going into those dark places and keeping safe 
what she finds there. So she's somebody that I've always had a very strong connection with. It's one of those that I've only in the last decade, maybe felt any safety talking about because it's, it's a very personal experience for me. And so it, it's one that you kind of carry stammer around. That. I feel like I've had a relationship with the Lord of the Hunt as well. This is so us because I definitely much stronger relationship with Lord of the Hunt. Oh gosh. One of my earliest Halloween memories, which learning more about the tradition later on, I recognized like, I guess I could mythologize in a way and go one Halloween dressed up as one of the other little goblins of the night and let loose upon the neighborhood running out wild. He found me and added me to the pack and I ran with him. It was wild and fun. Every now and then he would find me and, and even as I grew up and became estranged with that side of myself, we found each other again and would run wild and have a lot of fun. It's, it's a crazy, I guess you could say feral, but it's a very connected in with the environment, with the earth. It's hunting on a level of interconnectedness and oneness that is hard to explain and I think strange for those that haven't experienced it because you're not just hunting in the sense of I'm looking around to find this thing. You're feeling through the earth. You're feeling and hearing it on the wind. You're smelling it. You're steeped in all that interconnections. It's in a way kind of like a spider with their web, except for the web is all of the interconnections of life. And it's really fun and fascinating. There was even a point where I guess you could say I abused it and did it as a parlor trick. It would just, for some of the friends, I would just show up and they were just like, well, how did you even find me? Like, how did you know? How did you find me? And be like, you know, I couldn't exactly go, oh, I was out running around with the hunter. We were having a fun hunt and you're the prey. Tag your aunt and run off. Well, there's kind of that at the same time. I love that you told that story because we hear the hunter describe Words like planning, strategy, with wisdom are used, and they, they can feel so dry yeah, and so erudite. Because there is this kind of image of the general at the table making a plan or a strategy or what have you. And this is very much, there is a plan. Yeah. There is a strategy being employed, but it is very in the moment. It is very, fairly intuitive, but it's all in service of future goals and plans it, it's a it's part of a larger more, strategy i would almost say it's much more sun tzu like later on when i was introduced to sun tzu he started studying the art of war and and even in the bushido in studying those different traditions it is a lot more like that because it is in service of an end goal and a lot of that is through both there is that playful side there is that serious side it's all kind of intermixed and flowing it's not captured well in just simple words like the strategy plan. Yeah. Or the hunt. Or the hunt. Now, if these aren't the kinds of spirits that you connect to this time of year, that's fine. This is also the time of year where we celebrate the Morgan. This is her time. This is the time of year where the dog that comes to the Mor Morgan, where she comes to him in Bieltana. This is her time. This is the time for the crows, the ravens, and all of that. As somebody who does occasionally work for the Morgan, which I feel like is the only way to say that. I don't think anybody works with the Morgan. I think he, he, you, you work for her. At least that's always been my experience from other people I know who work for her. It's their experience as well. This is her time. And she is a very misunderstood spirit. The Morgan literally means uh, phantom queen. It is my personal belief, and I'm not alone in this, that Mor the Morgan is synonymous with Dano, that when we say the Tua de Danan, the tribe of the goddess Danu, we are talking about the Morgan there. I think that there is a firm basis to rest that claim on. I also believe that the Morgan is Bridget's new mother. I think there's also a very strong argument to make there. Again, I don't think that there's a right or wrong in this. If you disagree with me, more power to you. I don't think that there is a firm right or wrong on this. I do think I have a strong foundation to stand on now. In that connection to Danu, I see the Morgan as, in addition to all of the things that are associated with her, I see her associated with being an earth goddess as well. That she is the goddess of sovereignty 
for the world. Whereas Eru and the others were the goddesses of sovereignty specifically for the land of Ireland, where our ancestors in the United States named it the goddess of sovereignty for this land, Columbia. And I don't feel like that, but they did. They actually erected a temple to her. And if you've ever been to Washington, D.C., you may not know that the capital is a temple to the goddess Columbia. There are statues of her throughout the capital. There's a giant statue of her on top of the capital. And in the rotunda, we would go in under that giant, beautiful dome. There is a painting on the inside of it of her calling George Washington up and deifying him. It is called the Theosis of George Washington, painted on the inside of it. They named the goddess of sovereignty for this land. I don't like that. I feel like Columbia is a very colonizing goddess and not one that I am very fond of, but every land has their goddess of sovereignty. But Zdanu to me is the goddess of sovereignty for the whole world. And this is for time as we are celebrating the new year and really sitting back with the hunter and doing our plans and sitting back with the queen of the winds and doing our divinations to see what the future could hold for us. This is also a time to make sure that we are in right relationship with her and in that wonderful flow of life that she shepherds into the world because this is a time of transition this is a liminal time and liminal times are powerful we are switching from the light half of the year to the dark half of the year unless you're in the southern hemisphere then you're going the other way around but it's still a very powerful time and you should probably be dealing with the dogda because it's the <laughs> enough for you right now it's a very powerful time because everything is going to be changing. The amount of daylight is going down. The warmth in the world is changing. The literal temperature is changing. The challenges we're going to be facing are changing. This year, especially as somebody who is in the United States, and I'm saying this a lot because we had a commenter who was very surprised to find out that we were American, and, uh, hi, my name is Charlie, and I am an American. I, I took you think we were keeping that a surprise. I thought our accents gave that away. But anyway, oh, I fight to suppress my natural accent but it's still an american accent either way but anyway i mean granted not typical americans in a lot of ways or at least the typical image of an american i understand that but i, I was just surprised that we got a shock like and now i realize that you're an american like, anyway the comments are weird sometimes yeah we're going into an election this is a time for planning i don't want to get too political on here mainly because i honestly don't know what i would say we've already done an episode on activism and the craft if you haven't check that out go go check that out good episode talking about that but i think we need to be prepared for whatever happens because unfortunately i feel regardless of who wins it's not going to be a happy time in this country and unfortunately what happens in our country tends to affect the rest of the world i think there's going to be some turmoil here i don't know how long it will last because well the last time we dealt with the bund it faded fairly quickly granted it faded fairly quickly after Pearl Harbor. That's a big mitigating factor, but I feel like this is a blip. It is a, something that rises and falls periodically in our country. We saw this in the 40s. We saw this in the 60s. We saw this in the 80s. This is the Reagan Revolution, mind you, where a tyrannical leader came to power and did a lot of scary right-wing fascistic things. This is, we're on a cycle here in this country with this. And there we are. It's trying to happen again. Hopefully everything will be fine. But this is a time for us to be working our magics, working our craft, and just preparing and planning for whatever the results are, not just of the election, but how people will respond to the results of the election. That's going to be some powerful magics for us to do, just getting our lives ready for everything that's coming down the road. So it's good to take a minute to impart some wisdom from the hunter. When you're preparing, when you're planning, Tools, supplies, those things are wonderful, but you can't always take them with you. So when you're preparing, you need to remember, first and foremost, it's preparing yourself. You will always be there with you. When you stop to be there with you, it's done, game over. <laughs> You've moved on, on to the next phase, on to the next adventure. So that big part of preparing is preparing yourself. Knowledges, wisdoms, preparing skill sets, things of that nature. Because that's that will be with you wherever you are, whatever situation you're in, whatever's going on. And I'm going to be honest, I am not as doom and gloom as a lot of people. I hear a lot of people saying, we haven't been this fractured ever. Blah, blah, blah. As somebody who studied history, 
Just look up 1968 and 1969 in American history. We don't have to go all the way back to the Civil War for a lot of fractiousness. Just go back to 68 and 69. We're still doing better than they were then. So I'm not a doom and gloom kind of person. I don't foresee a lot of doom and gloom. I think that there are going to be struggles going forward. And a lot of that has to do with the fact that we have ignored climate change for too long and a lot of other things. A lot of it is attachment to things. Some of that fear and suffering comes from that because life will go on. And sometimes it goes on without us. And that's part of that attachment that we have to accept. And that's part of the meditation that we do this time of year. This is why death and all the spookiness is all tied in with the Halloween and with Samhain is accepting death. It's a thing. It's going to happen. It happens to everybody in their time and place. Remember, the hunter is the one who guides us to tech doom. Yeah. When we die and who leads the soul to their body when it's time to be bored again. Yep. The hunter functions in both ways and this is his season. This is his time of year. So this is a time to have that memento mori moment and just remember, yes, one day, but then to go on and celebrate life. Because as long as we are living, we should celebrate. I say this is somebody proudly a member of the queer community. This is how we've gotten through everything. You're angry, let's dance. You're happy, let's dance. You're sad, let's dance. Because that's how you develop resilience. Resilience, like the, the true heart of resilience is finding the joy in the middle of the everything else. I was going to say something specific, but no, it's in everything, it's else. everything else. And that really is what got distilled down into secular Halloween. Joy in the good, joy in the bad. We revel in the monsters. We love our monster movies. We love our spooky stories. For goodness sakes, all the witches and vampires and werewolves are heroes now. Sometimes they even sparkle. Yeah, I have feels about that too. But you're looking for that light in the darkness. That really is the theme of the holiday. Also, all the things we've talked about before, the ancestors are coming, be ready for all that comes with that. The other crowd are going to be out and about. And I have to say, I've talked about this before when we talk about the other crowd. The trooped and the untrooped. The trooped are those who have a cadre that they run around with. And the untrooped are those that even the other crowd decided, no, you're not good company. Get out with thee. So if the mischief makers that are the other crowd found somebody to be so obnoxious they didn't want to hang out with them. And I have noticed in my personal experience leading up to this holiday, ever since that full moon that really came for us, Seem to be a lot of untrooped members of the other crowd running around right now looking to bring mischief. We had a th- something come into the house the other day that we called the tripper. Everybody was tripping. The dog trip, the cat tripped. If you've never seen a cat trip, oh my gosh, it's a thing to behold. Everybody was falling down, almost falling down. It was a thing for a while. There, there's some mischief going on out there. So. Make sure you have your words set up and make sure that you're setting your boundaries. This might be one of those years where you want to make sure that you've got some iron tools to hand just in case you need to use them. Like it got so bad, I kind of got to the point of like, I don't like the idea of having a horseshoe over the door for for so, someone in Bealtaine, but you know, this year we're not, but I thought about it, but be joyous. This is our new year. The new spiritual year is, is breaking. The new spiritual year is upon us. It's a time for planning, reflection, figuring out what you want to do for the year to come. And I know, especially if you live in the United States, th- there are a lot of question marks on your, well, depending on what happens on these days. I know I've got those question marks in my calendar as well, but I still have plans because one way or another, I still have work to do because I love Bridget. I love her dearly, but she has set some tasks. As I like to say... With the setting sun, as the darkness creeps upon the land. We get ready for the new year. Then <laughs> we welcome in the new year and life rolls on. So some of the stuff that you can look forward to, I don't know how much we're going to do this actually on the show, but I know a lot of my meditation this year is going to be fairly Arthurian themed. I haven't done that for a couple of years and it's a wonderful thing to play around with. I want to do something with the green knight, something to do with the grail. I've got some practices that I like, some ones that I think could be prettied up and reformed and made better. So that's some stuff that's what we're looking at going. I have an armor ready and my love tokens and the spirit of Parsifal. I'm ready to just charge forward. Oh, I am so Parsifal. <laughs> Whatever's the right way to go, I will run in the opposite direction, but I'll eventually get where I need to go. So 
be thinking about what your year is going to be looking like. You don't have to have it all planned out, but now's a good time to be looking into it. Hopefully, all the prep work that we've done leading up to today, you are more than ready. I'd love to know how your Samhain goes. You can find us on Instagram, Threads, and Blue Sky. We're Creations Fast on all three. Technically, we're creationsfast.com over on Blue Sky because you get to connect it to your website domain. I'd love to know. You got some pictures you want to share. You can just add us, mention us in there. I'd love to see how you're celebrating Samhain this year. How you're ce- celebrating Halloween this year. One way or the other. I would love to see. Do let us know. You can also follow our accounts over there. There's more stuff c- coming. I've been working on how we want to actually do the socials because I took a social media hiatus for a couple of years and it's been interesting getting back into doing social media then. Really can't go home again. Looks so different after having loved for so long. <laughs> it's the same yet very different. Yes, the same but very different. We'd love to know how you're doing. You can also let us know down in the comments. If you're listening to us on Spotify or YouTube, you can leave a comment right there. If you're listening to us anywhere else and it says you to leave a comment, you can comment there because engagement is a great thing. But they won't let us know that you've commented, so we won't know. So take that comment, head over to creationsfast.com, click on chat, you can post it there, and then we will know that you had something to say. We'll be able to talk to you to talk to you there. While you're there, if you have a few dollars, you can pass our way. You can think about joining a membership. You can also support us on Kofi or Patreon. I am CE Dorset on both. We are thinking about opening that fourth wall. Again, that's what we're thinking about that. I think it is the thing we're probably going to do, but you know, that money really does help us keep food on our table, keep the lights on its roof over our heads. Thank you so much to everybody who gives. You all are amazing. If you don't have any money, don't worry about it. You can always help us out by sharing what we're doing. We've been growing really, really fast lately. That is awesome. And a lot of that has to do with y'all. Thank you for sharing. It really does help us out. Until next time, may the queen of the winds guide you to find all the paths that you need to walk. And may the hunter help you strategize the best way to go down them. Amen. Happy Halloween! Happy Halloween!